Hello, and welcome back to Let Supreme Ghost the Black Parade. We are up to Mission 5, the Brand, which is another uh, very good mission. Probably not reaching the heights of Death's Dominion, uh, but that's a tough ask. But it's not far away. It's a very different type of, although it's an undead mission, it's a different style, more in the vein of Haunted Cathedral. And uh, there is going to be, <laughs> spoiler alert, quite a twist here in the story. Um, at least that will manifest itself over the next couple of missions, uh, if you're not familiar with the overall campaign yet. So, yeah. Um, now, a couple of things to talk about before that. One, of course, is the uh, premiere release and the live chat that I honestly did not know about and did not plan to do when I was recording the last mission. So I didn't refer to that at all in that playthrough because I simply wasn't aware of it. It's something that apparently has been in um, in play on YouTube for a few years. So um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to that last mission and also for those of you that are here today. Um, I'm not sure if that's something I'm going to do for every video. Let me know, please, if you would want me to do that even for Patriot missions. I will definitely do it for the rest of the Black Parade campaign. And um, I don't really see a reason not to do it for well-known missions because you can still watch the video like you always have been able to after the premiere is done. Um, and the live chat will have been recorded and can be accessed after the fact too. And I think the chat feature really triggers just more buzz around the mission and more comments and more participation. And it would be cool... Um, thank you to Marble Man for tuning in last time, since he was the one who, who partly at least, uh, made the majority of Death's uh, Dominion. So it's awesome that he could chime in there. So it would be cool if, if some of the other creators of some of the upcoming missions would tune in for, for their creations as well. It's always nice to get extra insight on, um, on details that we don't pick up as players. Um... Now, one other announcement, and I've gotten a resurgence again of questions about Thief 3, probably because I have quite a few new viewers due to the Black Parade, which is nice. Um, and I am announcing that after the Black Parade and Patriot, after those two campaigns are done on my channel, I have decided to play Thief 3 casually for myself over the summer. I can't do a lot of recordings in the summer, um, but I'll play Thief 3 for myself, and not ghost it, but just play through it so I know the story and all that. I have installed it and it works, um, and I've made some tweaks to it that I've gotten recommended from a few people. And then if I like it, and I feel that it's suitable for ghosting, then I might play it on the channel, maybe in the fall, or something like that, we'll see. Let me know what you think about that. I know I've got already gotten quite a few comments about Thief 3. But I noticed uh, in this campaign already there are quite a few references to Thief 3. So it would maybe be useful for me to already have played that. But it's a little bit too late now. But I'll definitely play it for myself after. Now, uh, before we head into the brand, we're again going to load up and show you a few things actually from Death's Dominion. Uh, one here. Uh, going to go back to the Aldrius extension and just show you something that uh, where TIB2 pointed out. Thank you for that. <sighs> I'm not going to care about these wheels. Because he mentioned that you could actually block the door with the boulder and exit this way. And I want to show you that. So first, I want you to pay attention to how close this boulder is actually to the door. It's very close. And the door can only be opened but a fraction. You don't even see a gap there. So that is very close. And I did find, and thanks to him again, that you can... Oh, here these guys come. Let's deal with them, though. Oh, this, these are so annoying. Oh. 
Yeah, get out of here, you. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Back to our our thing here. So, the best way I found that he pointed out was to put the rubble on top of the door. So when you close the door, the rubble piece will fall down. So, the best way let's see that I found to do this is something like that. Okay, but close to perfect. There. See how close that boulder is to the wall now. You can't get it any closer than that. And you can't get it closer to that lamp because then it lands on top of the lamp and then it won't fall, won't fall down. Okay, but if we now close the door, it'll fall down like this. And see, it's not really close to the door. And though perfect placement isn't required, look what happens when we open the door here. There's quite a bit of gap, and I can imagine someone getting their hand in there and moving the boulder away. Let me show you one more time, but then we can do it from the other side. That's pretty good. Here. If you open the door now, you can actually grab the boulder. Like that. So, let me know again if you guys have found a better way to actually let this end up very close to the door so you can't open it. But the fact that there's that big of a gap, I can imagine, is enough for somebody to actually move that boulder away or squeeze through or something like that. So, I probably, even if I had discovered this, I probably still would have gone back uh, so that I could leave the boulder and block the door fully. To me, that seems the most supreme-like way to do it. I'm not sure if this would be a bust if you did this. Probably not. But to me, it wouldn't be 100% clean. So anyway, let me know what you think there. But awesome find. Uh, I love stuff like that. Uh, let's see. We're also going to go back... This is at the very end. I'm going to go back and show you a couple of other things in the... North Lower Tombs. One is, of course, uh, some of you pointed out right away in the chat, is that although the font doesn't work, you can still frob the pipe and get a holy water arrow from this. I didn't know that. I tried frobbing the font, and I didn't even think to check the pipe, and it's a little bit difficult to see that it lights up. And I ended up taking the holy water vial behind the bags here. Um... So, is that an unnecessary pickup? Since I could have used this to get the, um, the loot in the Grim Earth extension? I would not say that it's a, a bust to Supreme. Um, let me actually read the rule for you that is um, in question here. It's rule 13 for the Supreme um, list. It says, keep a clean inventory and then colon, so it's trying to explain what that means. Don't pick up what you don't need and return what is not usable. The common expression in the ghosting community, which I myself have been um, the cause of, is an unnecessary pickup, but that's actually not what it says in the rules. It says, don't pick up what you don't need. Well, I didn't know about this font, so I needed that vial. So if you need it, and if you use it, then that is something that is required for you to finish the mission. It's not required for people to know all aspects of the mission. Uh, otherwise, somebody could come five years later and say, hey, I need, didn't need that vial, you busted Supreme. So that is not the point. And it says, return what is not usable. So that, that keeps with the premise of... of leaving the mission the way you found it, besides the things that you take for loot and objectives, and those you need to achieve those. So that is definitely not a bust. But I want to show you that you can inde indeed have time enough to do this. So if we do that... Oh, that may come in handy. <laughs> so that was um, a jump that I shouldn't have made. And I also like that 
Garrett's Garrett's reference there. I didn't know that, that existed. I don't want to save it because I want to get back to the previous save afterwards. <sighs> Let's try it again. Well, that may come in handy. So if we run down here, we should be able to make it to the Grimworth extension in time. Got to go all the way down. It's not too much time, but... There we go. Got a couple of seconds to spare, and I might have been able to do it quicker. So, again, that proves that you don't need that vial. So, if you want to keep it completely clean, if you know about that, then you can skip it. Um, let's see here. One more thing that I wanted to show you, a mistake that I referenced... Let's go back up here. Um, something that refers to the Grave Warden's Vigil, and I think Marble Man pointed this out. Okay, let's see. <sighs> ah! As I said, if you fall down here, you die, but you don't. This will still take you to the Grave Warden's Vigil. There's actually three different levels you can fall down from. The one that we did, we see right there. And then you can fall down from here. What? And you can also fall down from the top level where the apparition was, which is right there. So this is a, a way to tie together three different levels of the mission. So, uh, another nice shortcut if you wanna, if you wanna use it. Now, the final thing is actually an edit to the run because we didn't successfully Supreme Ghost the run. This is the last quick save that I made in the mission. So we actually need to revisit the clock maker. <sighs> <sighs> Because I forgot to close the safe. So that actually would have been a supreme bust, or it was a supreme bust, but now we can claim that success. Um, also, a word maybe on the apparition. Uh, a couple of you said that I might have taken a first alert when I did my last drop down to the Grave Warden's Vigil. Um, I don't agree with that in retrospect. I tried to listen to it because when I fell down, the apparition was standing still at the end of his patrol. And any enemy that patrols and then stops for a while, while he stopped, he doesn't make first alerts. That refers to guards, to any kind of enemy. So the fact that he restarted his voice line there, I think more has to do with me getting uh, closer to him. Because then the engine triggers um, any enemy's patrol and voice line. Sometimes we start from that. So I don't think that that was the first alert. I think we managed to avoid that, hopefully, anyway. So that should be a successful supreme of Death's Dominion. Uh, and with that, let's then go ahead and continue and um, start the brand.
Things could be worse. Getting Aldrius' demise was a challenge in itself. But it paid off, as Nawal seemed to be extremely satisfied. No rest for thievery, though, as he soon gave me another job. One of Dewall's musings is a harp inlaid with priceless amethysts, which belong to the Howe Trees, one of the oldest families in the city. He's been trying to get it for years, but none of the sneaks he hired to do the job came back, and some flat out refused to do it. And, well, I can't blame them. The Howe Tree family used to own a vast manor in the old quarter, but it was promptly abandoned during the incident and now lies beyond the barricades, those huge ramparts the authorities at that time built to contain the dead. The old quarter is a lively place, but few dare go near the barricades, and the immediate area beyond is almost completely abandoned, save for the odd rogue in hiding or a walking corpse or two. Finding a way past the ramparts is my first task, and once inside the sealed section, I'll have to make my way to the Howtree Manor. I have a map of the ward, but it's old and the barricades weren't built back then. I also have a map of the manor, but like the map of the ward, it may not accurately represent how the place looks like today. Let's hope I can find my way around, and as usual, come as prepared as I can. So, on expert, find a way past the barricades and get into the sealed section. Break into Hawtree or Howtree Manor. Steal the harp inlaid with amethysts. You've heard that one of the descendants of the old Howtree bloodline has been looking for her family portraits. They were left during the old quarter incident and with some luck are probably still in the manor. Find them. Time to put your skills to the test. Rob this part of town blind for at least 1500 worth of valuables. Don't kill any humans while you're on the job. That's just really bad taste when you're so close to the sealed section. Get out of Howtree Manor and back to where you started when you are done. So, this mission can also be Supreme Ghosted, and it is fairly easy to do so. We can't take all the loot again. Um, there's one area where we definitely have to skip, uh, you know, a few small items of loot. And then there's one other loot item that I'm a little bit unsure of. So I'll see what I decide when I get to that area. But, uh, yeah. So, we start with Robero's important, and um, nothing else really here that we can use for Supreme. There is a hot tip. A shady pawnbroker is willing to divulge what he claims is very valuable info for a hefty price of 275 Well, I'm just going to read it to you. Some of the local landlords are damn stubborn and categorically refuse to obey some decree that orders all old quarter landlords in possession of estates close to the barricades to brick up specific doors and windows in their manors and the houses they put up for rent. Doors and windows facing the inside of the seal section, to be exact. Call the morbid curiosity um, or just plain stupid. So obviously a, a link to the mission morbid curiosity there. So that's a hint uh, that you actually can break through some of those barricades to get to um, the other side, to the sealed section. Um, we can't do that for Supreme, but and we don't need to, but that is an option. Okay, let's get going. Let us make a real save there. And look at our map. We only have one map of the city, but the city isn't that big, so um, this is one area that is walled up, that is sort of the original streets that's supposed to go through here, but that's been blocked. And this is the wall that sort of divides, goes right here, that divides the sealed section, which is to the north and east, from uh, the old quarter intact area, which is in the southwest here. You really only have three named areas on the map that's in the safe zone. Glendower Estate, uh, Blackwind Manor, and Alderman's Court. Um, any of the guards in the streets here are oblivious to our presence unless we use weapons or are caught somewhere we're not supposed to be. There are some 
guards though up on the rooftops because they're on private property they will detect you they can even detect you when you are in the streets so let's be a little bit careful about that um, the sealed section is sort of divided into two areas by a canal here that is blocked off in certain sections but it's supposed to go all the way east west like this and there's an industrial tenement section in the south here uh, and there's also one sealed section in the west so I guess it's divided into three because the last one will be the how tree manor up here now the manor looks very small here compared to the area I think it should have been bigger on the map because this section outside of it isn't that big so this is the gloom side ward uh, anno 778 so we start in the southwest here you also have a fairly crude map of the manors um, or two of the floors there is a basement as well um, and there is an attic so there's a first floor this is the south the main entrance there's a staircase inside and there are some access points to the outside and I'll talk about that when we get there and then there's a second floor too that mimics the first floor but yeah there is a floor above this and there is a floor below as well that's it Bet this must be quite a pretty sight on some nights Tonight isn't one of those nights. There we go. Um, so here you can see the streets are below us, actually. We're starting a little bit higher up. We're actually going to climb here fairly right away. There's a guard up there. <gasps> Here. He's in a... Or lives in this bedroom, I guess. Two stacks of copper coins and a readable here. Captain, just a quick note to let you know, I sent Grundbell to silence that cabin boy. Your secret is safe. I'm also taking the opportunity to tell you that contacting Farron Piley, a top man on the Maiden's uh, Avarice, might be interesting. That chap had a vision very much like yours while sailing on the northern seas. He insists the wind stopped dead for a minute and that a sinister dark mass appeared under the water and gazed at him before everything returned to normal. The crew denies the event, but an uneasiness can be felt every time someone talks about it. I think there is an omerta, and that this Farron bloke is the only one who isn't afraid to talk about it. You can contact him at the Grinning Boar uh, Inn Fidgewake's Hollow, if you wish. So an omerta, I think, is like a, almost like a code of silence uh, about criminal activities. And Fidgewake's Hollow, I believe, is from Chalice of Souls, the brothel, which was mentioned, I think, in a previous mission also. You can pick this open, and it has a smoke bomb in it. But obviously we're not going to do that. Here, and wait for that guy to come back. So he is stationed there, and then he goes all the way back to where we roped up. There, we're gonna jump over here, actually. <sighs> You have a flash bomb. I wonder which one of them is behind that latest this conversation that's going to start here. I'm not sure exactly no, when it's it going to start. Be. What lies beneath her patina of civility? Something impish, I'll wager. Was Here's a bottle of wine. Come to believe the actor Can't go any further than this. This just turns off the light. <coughs> Here's a grate that you actually can open, but you can't get up there without stacking a few things. Let's listen to that conversation. 
to th this is the last time I attend one of your banquets, Johan. This was the worst food I ate in ages. But, but I got those delicious foodstuffs from Bowen and and the wine from Salania. Your cook is responsible for Small such syrup. a mess. The food was overcooked and inedible. Well, yes, you're right, of course, verily. I'll have him beaten by my guard. And, to add insult to injury, the company was awful, and the minstrel kept looking at my bosom. Truly unacceptable. I'll have him flogged and fed to the hounds. I am furious, Johan. Furious! I was also very disappointed in the service. Your servant spilled some wine on the floor, and it splashed on my clothes. Look! My garments are ruined! Such dishonor to my noble name, and to your graceful person. I'll have my servant sent to the pillory. Your captain of the guard was also very rude to me, and did not properly address my fine person of exceptional status. Such horror. I'll have him cut out his own tongue. And, and, and now I've run out of things to complain about. But it was dreadful, Johan. Utterly dreadful. You should be ashamed. But, but I am, dear. I am. I'll, I'll, I'll have my soon-to-be mute captain of the guard throw me out of a window for having disgraced you. Ugh, this is the least you can do. <laughs> to think our tithe money goes to pay these... Okay, so I took his purse there. You. Worth 60, total 117. I went into the light a little bit there, so in a normal situation, they probably would have first alerted, but since they were in their conversation, they're too busy with that. How dare they insult my intellect like that? What lies beneath your patina There. So this is actually Blackwind Manor. So we've gone through their sort of roof garden area, and we're now sort of looking over Alderman's Court. Something impish, I'll wager. Hmm. I need to take a good for that to wash the crop. Can't actually get spotted here by a guard that's further that way. There's a goblet over here that I want to take. 132. He's coming right now. Let's hope the cook has something better in store today than what yesterday. Lies her patina, dear? That was slightly thrilling. How <laughs> dare they insult my intellect like that? Someday she saw me. they'll pay. Okay. So here are some pipes that you can use to, tithe money to, to actually these. jump all the way over. There's another chain to that goes over there. You can get over to that part of the wall, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go up here. How dare they insult my intellect like that? That is not how we do that. How dare they insult my intellect like that? What you say? I wonder which one of them is behind this latest machination. No, it can't be. There, we're out of view of that anyway. They won't be able to hear that. Okay, so now we're in one of the top floors in what I maybe assume is Alderman's building or something like that. Here's a journal. You'd think being a lepidopterist in the city would be a, a hard task, with all that smoke coming from the factories and the grime on the walls and windows. Finding new interesting butterflies sounds like a daunting task in such an environment, but the truth is I have encountered many extraordinary specimens over the years. So, um, as a zoologist, then a Lepidoptera is the order, the insect order, that uh, butterflies and moths belong to. So it's not just butterflies, but you would be a, a moth expert as well. Butterflies and moths are very similar, by the way. One is just nocturnal and one is not. One such specimen was a very peculiar butterfly I came across during a feast in Midden Chapel a few years back. More precisely, at Lord Brackman's party for the summer solstice soiree. Um, or soir, I guess it's pronounced. 
I was half drunk in the back garden with a few other attendants when it appeared to me, a very imperial looking butterfly with very large thin soft wings. The color on them were very uniform, vivid and almost glistening. I don't think I've ever seen one this big and majestic before. I was simply awestruck by its beauty. It stayed there for quite a while, fluttering about, showing off its glamorous appearance as if it was trying to seduce us old bitter poets and lovers of the aesthetic. It certainly worked in my case. But it sadly flew away when Lord Rutherford decided to have a little accident and almost broke his jaw, and to this day I've never been able to track such a species down again. My last encounter with a specimen of interest dates back from a few months ago, just as I was meeting the eccentric Lady Ladivia at her family home in North Quarter. While she has good conversation, she is, alas, quite the pitiful writer, and I had to endure her dreadful pro prose for what I believe was an eternity. She probably grew as bored as me, now that I think about it, as after a while she drank some wine and decided to talk about her various trips to Bone, which is a city I'd certainly love to visit. Um, it was then that it flew in, a particularly odd but fabulous specimen of the sort I've never seen before. You see, dear reader, most Lepidoptera have very smooth, thin, and symmetrical wings, but this one had slightly asymmetrical, short, thick, and rather bumpy ones. As a comparison to the specimen above, the wings on this one were more complex in terms of colors, with darker shades on the outside. Lady, Lady Ladivia was particularly interested when I said my old self was a very avid pursuer of beauty, and that I considered Lepidoptera to be creatures that no deity would ever have dreamt of siring. Okay. <sighs> All right, and then we also have a readable right here. Confirmation of previous query. You are in serious danger. Cheryly leaked the names under torture. Suggestion of hiding in the sealed section rejected. Presence of undesirable elements, the supernatural type. Identity of the traitor confirmed. S. Cravantak. Dispatch agent to silence him. He's currently hiding at Grimfast Inn, Lampfire Hills. Next meeting is Ugly Dog Ale House, Bleach Market Ward. Burn this note once memorized. SQ. So Lampfire Hills is um, an area of the city that is that was made by Pura for his calendar missions. Actually, Autumn in Lampfire Hills was one of his for earlier missions. Okay. There's a gold candlestick up here. And there is a green vase on the dresser, total 232. So this is an abandoned building, or it's been looted, it seems like. There's also three statues in this area. Open window. You can't get in here, but you can see out. There's a loaf of bread, but there are... Uh, five broaded arrows in this. There's a pair of glasses as well here. Another candlestick. A lot of loot in this building. 377. And we can move this direction. So here, you can actually see out to the sealed section. So this is to the east. So we're actually at the very east end of this building now, uh, looking out through the wall here onto the top of the buildings in this area. And what's interesting is that there's a fire arrow and there's an explosive charge. So let's see what happens do that and shoot it. Uh, break the barrel and we break the wall here as well. So this is actually taking you out to the sealed section. And this is a rooftop that's very difficult to get to if you don't go through this window. So here this little plaza is um, this section. So we're looking east now. So here you can drop onto rooftops and get down to an area that has some flooded parts too. We'll get to that area later. I'm obviously not going to take that way in, but that is a way to do it. Okay. And the 
only way for us to proceed here is drop down. We'll get to an engine room of sorts. Uh, in this footlocker is a healing potion. The only way for us to proceed now is go through here. <sighs> Bomb. There's a water arrow and there are some food grapes. A little toilet and a very well hidden piece of loot. Stack of gold coins back here. Total 402. That was one of the ones I found on my second run through. And now we come out on a balcony just south of where we were. So we've made a loop through this building now and are coming back right here. so we don't have to worry about it. 414. So now we're in Alderman's Court then, at the south end of it. Let's read this. Let it be known that the Honorable T. Blackwind, Alderman of Gloomside Ward, is looking for a competence, men and women alike. <coughs> Able in mathematics, algebra, and all means of numerical sciences. Excellent salaries and lodgings are to be expected. If interested, inquire in person over a messenger at his mansion, Dancing Plague Street, printed by Cornelius Adderton, Duskmoor uh, District. So I guess then that Blackwind is an alderman. I'm not really sure what alderman is. Uh, let's... An elected member of a municipal council. Okay. Interesting. So then, this building here, I'm not sure what is then. It's just the residential building east of Alderman Court. But Blackwin is the council member then. Good. Okay. So let's head east here. Uh, down here is a door to a prison area that actually can take you uh, underground back to the ground floor of Blackwind Manor. But you can get to that area, that's actually an alchemist. You can get to that area from other locations that circumvents having to pick the lock on this door. So I'm going to do that for sure. Uh, we don't have to pick many locks at all in this mission. At least not doors. Let's go up here. So now we're getting to this little courtyard. Here's a readable. The Excellent Gazette. Bring in the truth since 827. Please subscribe. Make them pay. Make them drink the seawaters. Drown them in the Drithfroth's sewage. The recent accidents as wayside factories have been caused by agents from Blackbrook. Do your duty for the city. Gather all the outsiders to the docks and throw them into the sea. See? The Excellent Gazette is always right. <laughs> Only drunkards and heretics drink alcohol. Alcohol is the trickster's own urine that comes right out of the realm of malice and chaos. Thus spoke the high priest Markander. Let us all throw the pagan juice away. Um, 
Even drinking Foul Creek's water is safer. Let us show the winemakers what proud citizens drink. Patriotic meats. More and more blue bloods are buying Roxburgh's horribles and blood sausages. They forget the good old peverate pies and Meinel steaks that shape our city's culture. This is a war against our gastronomy. Let us show our decadent aristocracy what meats true patriots eat. <laughs> Okay, so here's uh, a guy that is drunk, it seems like. Let me jump up here. Um, over there, um, you can get to that area, but I haven't found a way without stackables to jump up to the top ledge. But you can get there a different way that I'm going to show you. So now we're, we're actually back into this building just on the northern side of it. And here is a bottle of wine. Over here is a moss arrow. There's a blue vase, 564. And there is a gold goblet. Some beautiful portraits. Okay, and there's a book here as well that we can read. Silly Stories for Good Children by Josikin Bradle. Grime, or Grim Teeth, Grime Teeth Grimmy. Malicious youngsters who think they're smart because they can slip into ventilation shafts should be cautious of Grime Teeth Grimmy's grime-covered sharp teeth. He's a very old beggar, cursed by the builder to roam eternally in air shafts and pipes alike before his final coming. Soot and dirt are his only food along with the occasional dead rat. So if he sees a child's juicy bottom, he won't hesitate. Soggy Sally. Don't play in puddles, lest you receive Soggy Sally's glare. She's an evil pagan fairy, living in a realm where honey and fruits are replaced with cod liver oil and smelly cabbages. And you shall be permanent guest if she is dragging you in. Um, <laughs> a little note. I grew up actually drinking um, fish liver oil. That was a, sort of a healthy thing that we got. Um, we had them and we had to drink the actual liquid, but then later on they came out with capsules that could have flavoring in it and whatnot. So anyway, the hag. Children who wander at night are met with the hag. They call her the gray lady too because she's covered head to toe with gray sackcloth. She's looking for children to steal their skin. So you better stay at home when it's past the 11th toll. All right. Okay. So, here, you can go into this vent. This is kind of difficult to close after us, but you can do it like that. Alrighty. So now, we are actually closer to that plaza that I said in the sealed section. Drop down here, here's a moss arrow. So this is the sealed section, actually. Here's a mine, a flash bomb, and a guy that has fallen to his death from a broken ladder, it seems. You can see that. Let's see, there isn't a zombie here. Speed potion and a fire arrow as well here. These potions are obviously very useful. Now we're not going to go that way. We are... Instead going to continue and finish up the... <sighs> areas in the safe area first. And now we come up to an area that's on the balcony above that courtyard. It's from a different location. And then here is just some food. And uh, there's a diary. 8.13.33 Finally found some time to write down my adventures. The life of that the dastardly adventurer Dennis Haytenbus needs to be chronicled. 
I just managed to make the nocturne offsprings of the trickster go away when the loathable Quingevir... Uh, Quingevir lords? I'm sure if that's a name or reference to something. Unanimously decided to increase the tithe on opium fourfold. How am I going to sleep in peace now? With rum? Just like sailors? Anyhow, anyhow I have it better than the sen senor. His health has been steadily degrading ever since that banquet. We managed to capture the Cargnazis cook, thinking he poisoned the food, but after a bit, it became blindingly obvious the poor bloke didn't know a thing, and that we would have to serve as scapegoat in case the Cargnazis decided to look for blood. 8:21:33. The senor finally keeled. After a week coughing up his lungs, he was a stern and cruel man, but at least the sleeping quarters in his palace did not have too much mildew and the food wasn't too bad. Rest in peace. I'm off to my brothers in the city. 8.27.33 It was good meeting Andori again. He hasn't changed one bit. He still stinks like a dead Burrick, but he is still as sharp as ever. And he still complains about my pride. As we were drinking our weight in ale at the local tavern, he told me he was on a job as big as the Builder's Hammer, an expedition into the sealed section. As far as I understand, the current landlord doesn't give a damn about the baronial edict that commands all landlords to brick up their windows on the side of the barricades. My brother sees in this the perfect occasion to venture there and bring back treasures. Why not? 9133. First expedition. The sealed section isn't as impressive day by day, or by day, as long as we avoid venturing too deep. We found a massive manor, but no points of entry. Andori thinks he saw shadows move from beyond the windows, but I didn't see a thing. The funny thing is that all the vegetation in the vicinity is completely dead. We managed to bring back three statuettes, a gold necklace, twelve ivory glasses, and a weird book we found in a secluded room. Probably some magic stuff. Toss that in the canal. So I have never found any of this, so I think this is just sort of a red herring. 9933. The innkeeper at the cellar door wasted no time telling me about all the about the local gossip. For a price, the local apothecary apparently transforms his workshop into a brothel after nightfall. Some kid seemingly got snatched in an air shaft, a bloke fell from a local church, but his body was never found. And no mention of any items coming from the sealed section found on the undermarket. Excellent. 9-12-33. This had to happen sooner or later. We've been pretty discreet with our operations, but they finally brought jealousy. That old ladder will have to support our fat arses one last time. After that, we're off to Arkford to disappear for a while. Let's see. Alrighty. <sighs> I'll come out here, so now we can drop. Here's an apple. Ah! Can't do that. Should it? Shot, I mean. Huh? Right, we're gonna go up here. <laughs> and we're gonna do that. Huh? <sighs> so now we can get up to 
another part of Blackwind Manor. So we essentially went back and entered Blackwind Manor in the northern side. Here. Someone behind. Yeah, he can see me there. I'm happy I didn't save. I was about to save there. <laughs> the City Herald, 9-12-33. The theft epidemic continues to ravage the city. The Abbey of St. Graymall, the father of boilers, ended up being another target in an unprecedented series of heists taking place all over the city. While hits on noble estates have become almost mundane over the last year, now it seems not even the Order of the Hammer is saved from this plague. St. Graymall's chalice, an artifact of in inestimable value for the Order, has been removed right from the reliquary at the heart of the Abbey. Cardinal Berengier has refused to make any official statement. Meanwhile, Father Guillaume of Hightown has been quite vocal about the event. It is no doubt the result of corruption within our very order. No miscreant would have ever gotten close to the chalice had the funds been properly allocated. Someone must have spent too much of the tithes on gold candlesticks. But worry not, the builder's right. The builder's right judgment shall befall all sinners who are to blame for this. Nevertheless, nobody yet knows who this mysterious burglar is, or if these heists are even being perpetrated by the same individual. The last case this brazen took place uh, mere months ago, when Lord Solis' fabled gem collection, the gems of Sarnoth, were stolen. To date, there is no trace of the gems, and while the Baron's police claims to have several suspects, Commissioner Truart reiterated that they are not at liberty to release any details. The only figure to have been implicated in the case is Lord Rainsford. Allegedly, details of his criminal activities that may have to do with heists have been revealed in an anonymous tip-off last Pampanosis. However, the suspicions were dropped almost immediately by the Baron's police for reasons not revealed to the public. Lord Rainsford himself, however, has been quoted saying, This is most certainly a prank by one of my rivals. Just think for a moment, isn't it utterly foolish to keep a written track of illegal dealings? With no seeming progress made towards unraveling this mystery, the Herald can only predict that another big heist is bound to happen within the next few months. Rumpleball, Downlock Dark Smog 2-3, Hightown New Market 5-2, Old Quarter Downtown 2-4. Um, the Gems of Sarnoth is sort of a, an elusive story in uh, the original canon, because although there is mention of them in the original game, it is only mentioned in the intro video. There is a, a, a very, very short, brief, and fading clip where you can see a poster that says Garrett is wanted for uh, stealing the gems of Sarnoth, but we never actually do this in any mission. I'm not sure if there's a fan mission that addresses this. Uh, and I think you can also see it, although I, ha I don't remember myself, you can see reference to the gems of Sarnoth in the blooper reel mission, the one that is after the Maw of Chaos uh, in Thief Gold. So I don't know how the reference there, though. So if you guys know anything about that, then then let me know, please. All right, six fourteen there. Okay, so here we have gold goblet. Here we also have a spirit potion. It's uh, very valuable. Up here we have two water arrows in this foot locker. Let's make a real save so we don't make a mistake here. Oh, don't want to make 
make those noises. Alright, so now we're actually... We've made our way into the upper floor of the Alchemist. There's a lower floor too, but that is um, a little more difficult to get to. So in here... Fire poker. Total 714. There's also a... Holy water vial back here, very difficult to find. There's a healing potion on the table. There's also another quite cleverly hidden piece of loot. Up here, a gold... Gold nugget. Sort of masked as one of the planets. Total 814. Now, heroes are great as well. I can actually go there, but you can. That takes you back to the top floor of Blackwind, where we overheard that conversation, so we're not going to go that direction. That we're gonna make our way down to the bottom floor here. Let's just wait for him to go, shall we? now, but that's the best way I've found from here to get down to the his purse, and then this is right below the entrance point. We started where the, you see the board between the two statues there. And here is St. Stacabius Antimonium, alchemical supplies. This is a locked door and is not pickable either. So then the only place that we haven't gone yet, really, is Glendower Estate. Uh, tiara 953 just laying in a box on the streets delivery to Glendower Estate 91233 3 barrels of white mayonnaise 105 2 crates of strong mayonnaise jars 110 total 215 please forgive my curiosity but why do you need so much mayonnaise since you seem to enjoy this sauce's acidic taste so much what would you say to a sample of Eudolipian gray cheese. The savors of this delicious cheese are very similar. I'm certain you'd like it. Burgor and Lanaset, traders of fine delicacies. All right, we're gonna walk in through the main door here. There's a conversation that's gonna start. I'm gonna take a piece of loot while they're doing that. No, there is not enough meat for your midnight snack job. Besides, it's for the Lord and his guest. 
Not too long ago, we had so much pig butter and sausages, we could have given some leftovers to the dogs and the beggars. The Baron's coffers are dry, you big dummy. Haven't you noticed how high the levy on the foodstuffs is lately? War costs money, you know. I don't understand. If the Baron needs so much money, why is he not minting more coins? Because... Minting more coins means lowering the value of gold. Uh-huh. Since when? Oh, and blast it. You both give me a headache. I'm off to my patrol. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, just had to take a phone call there. So I love the conversation that they just had, <laughs> because it shows how dumb the guards are. How the servants have a greater understanding for the society and its inner workings rather than the guards. And uh, it kind of reminds me of something that Alex in the Inside at Last podcast said in one of their very first videos. That it justifies how easy it is to get around the guards, because the world is already setting up a scenario where they are just idiots. Uh, anyway, do not open this door ever. That's outside to the, you know, to the sealed section. Oops. You want to go into the wine cellar? There is a rope arrow on top of the shelf. We don't need that. In this hallway, you have a stack of silver coins and two stacks of silver coins and one of copper, I think. Let's see. 10.32. We are going to head upstairs, and I think there's a servant up there now. He will come back down. I don't think he roams around too much up there. No. Hopefully we can hide here. So we're going to go in there, but at the very top here you have a holy water vial. If you're interested in such. Okay, here we have a trophy. Some foodstuffs. Not much else. So we're obviously in Glendower Estate now. Windows are barricaded up. I don't think there's any other window you can blow open. Let me know, but... Than the one I showed you earlier. And here... It's a statue and... A blue vase. And then we actually come back out to the window pretty close to where we... <sighs> started the mission. So you can, of course, get here from that direction. Let's read this. I'm off to the opera. Please keep an eye on your father. He's back to acting demented and rubbing his skin with salt and sacred ointments from that priest crook. Do you know what he told me this time? He told me that he had to purify himself because tainted blood poured from the ceiling during the morning mass. Of course, no blood on his clothes were to be seen. I heard that a few other people have been radically changing their behavior for a few weeks. The grocer's sisters keeps cleaning her house while whispering that dust brings death. Old Craster is suddenly afraid of spirals. And one of the guards at St. Vimeer's Gate, you know, that decrepit pervert, killed himself by blood loss resulting from cutting, off, cutting his own arm off. The thing they have in common, they were all, or they all, were at the old cathedral during that infamous mass the one during which a stone suddenly began floating above the altar and started singing in a fiendish voice. Your father was there too. That sounds weird. Okay, now up here, there is a noisemaker arrow. Let's see. We are going to take a pretty difficult piece of loot here. 
<sighs> a valuable book. Let's see, I don't know if we can get back there with him like that. Good. Move that. Okay. So, uh, in this hallway, there is a safe. There's a readable soon that will talk about it. Here's a fire arrow, a water arrow, and a garden key. That opens the door down at the bottom floor there. We don't need to leave that way, so... here instead. Okay. Out on the balcony, there's a bottle of wine and a goblet. 1232. And then there's a readable. That's quite interesting. First entry. This parapet is the ideal overlook. I can clearly see the canal below. Let's begin chronicling my observations in the sealed section. Alas, nothing too outlandish to report today. Better luck tomorrow. Second entry. Saw some jack of blade wade in the canal tonight probably thinking the sealed section is a good place to hide from the law. Too bad he can't hide from my piercing gaze. So that's probably some of the thieves that we read about not long ago. Uh, they said they hid some loot, didn't they, in the canal? Third entry. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just some crazy th or cray thing passing through. The bowman patrolling the barricade next to my manor seems annoyed by my presence, but he wouldn't dare report me to Blackwind. Fourth entry. Weird. All the plants around the canal die during the night. Nothing else to report. Fifth entry. Finally, I saw a dead husk moving around today. What an incredible thing to witness. Good thing I have my spyglass. They really do exist. Observed the thing for hours, and it just walked about a bit. Sixth entry. Brought basil, or basil, with me. Uh, might be my last entry. All the plants in my garden died overnight. My trees are completely dead, and the grass is covered with leaves. That creature is still there but this time it turned around and looked me straight in the eye as I was looking at it through my spyglass. Basil almost fell when I jumped from fear. Lock the garden door and stash the key in my safe so no one wanders there by accident. So that's the, the hint to the location of the safe. I don't want this um, book, so I'm going to just reload. Um, now we want to get down. We're actually done. And we want to get down into the seal section, and there are multiple places you can do that, but... Dropping here as possible. So we're going to do that from the parapets. We'll try to do it without too many reloads. This month's prize is 35 crowns. Calvin be uh, bets the chimney of the house with the yellow bricks is going to collapse. Harold bets the old burn manor is going to lose more of its roof before the yellow house chimney collapses. Wallace bets the black bridge is going to collapse. Still waiting on Bernard and Jerriot to place their bets. Please add your bets below your slackers. <coughs> so let's see here. I think actually maybe we'll drop down on that side. I think that's easier to do. Because if we can drop down into the water directly, then we won't take any damage. I'm not sure what. Someone behind. Whoa. <coughs> There we 
go. That completed the find a way past the barricades. So I'm going to quickly go back. <sighs> Towards this is then the garden gate to Glendowers. Go back here because there's a piece of loot that I want. I'm not going to go back to this area later, so I'll take it now. Pretty well hidden one, a goblet. Twelve forty-seven. Here's a water arrow. Nothing up on that ledge. And here's another water arrow. And here you can actually continue... Uh, right here, underneath these buildings. And we are going to go there a little bit later. You can access the sewers from that section. But that's not a route I'm going to take right now. Instead, I'm going to... So here's a zombie, or it's not a sleeping zombie right now. You can walk by it without any problems, but there is a stationary zombie here. So this guy turns either direction. <laughs> so we gotta wait for him to turn around. Come on. longer than usual. And he turns around again very quickly. Here's a purple vase. Total 12.97. Now this is actually a sleeping zombie once we've taken that. And you can jump. Oh, well, do that too. It's totally fine. That's not what my intention was, but you can jump up on the railing there and get around it. My intention was to get up here. So now, instead of going underneath them, we want to go this direction. Make sure I don't get caught by that guard. And now you can actually go this way. Oh. I think this is cool. See in pretty much every direction here. <coughs> Don't know if there's a way to get up on top of this. <clears throat> I haven't really tried. Let me know if you have been able to and if there's anything up there. I doubt it. But that is a way. Uh, now, we're going to go away from the risk of getting seen by any guards here. We're going to go 
went to this little abandoned uh, place. And here is a sleeping zombie, literally, because he's in bed. Let's read this first. G. So the duel is taking place tomorrow at Wowval Court on the third afternoon chime. I find our little game incredibly amusing, and I cannot believe how everyone is utterly oblivious to it. I guess these acting lessons really paid off in the end. It really is an ordeal trying not to chuckle and lose composure when you act all offended by my insult that started this whole ridiculous case. These people really are lackwits. With convincing anger, threats, and a high birth, you can make them waste money on lawyers for a simple weight insult. Our lives used to be so, so dull, but this is the bee's knees. I've never laughed this much in my entire existence, but it's not over, my friend, it's not over, for I bet you five Amontillado bottles that my lawyer wins the duel. He is far from good in a courtroom, so much so I could defend myself, but I heard he was one damn fine swordsman. I shall try to catch some sleep, but I'm already very impatient. See you tomorrow and bring my prize, B. Seems like whoever lived here used to have some kind of scam that they ran with, the, with people in the justice system. Now here we have the first piece of loot that we have to skip for Supreme. Because there are two little coins. Here and here. Which you can easily take for ghosts without waking him up. But there's no way to take this for Supreme that I have found. Because this zombie is elevated from the floor. And you can usually use something to, to stack and stand on. But there's no way to do that and reach these coins. Uh, even if you brought a boulder or a crate in here, that wouldn't work. So... I don't really know there is a solution to this. The only solution I've come up with is to skip the, the coin. So that's only worth two, though. So the first two gold skipped. Behind this, we have a candlestick holder worth 50, total 1347. Now we can actually see a little bit of the manor in the distance. So we are actually on this ledge. So we're looking sort of northeast so we can see this section of How Tree Manor. We're not going to go there just yet. Instead, let's see. Just trying to jump over and mantle in through that window. definitely can do. <sighs> like that. Oh, that's right. There is a sleeping zombie in here. Right there. I want to go in here because there are three stacks of coins. Total 1382. The zombie you hear is the one that we saw when we just saw into the seal section in the southeast. So you can open this gate and go through there, but there's no way to close or open this from the other side. So I don't think that's a method that I will use. Instead, I want to head back here. There is a zombie that comes out here. Let's see, I want to get up here so I can read something. Oh. Well, I need to get back up there to read it, actually. Another sleeping zombie, there's a readable. I finally found that crazed crone from Kynepok Street. They say she's as old as the old quarter, and judging by her wrinkled face, I wouldn't dare say the contrary. Anyway, she's one of the only people truly capable of seeing the future. For a large sum of money, of course. <laughs> 
I drop a bag full of gold on the table and ask her, should I prepare my caravan and travel to Caradon now, or should I wait? Will the weather allow me to reach the town safely? She then leans over a pile of half-eaten old meat with flies swarming around, puts her skeletal fingers in it, drinks a glass of builder's knows what, and smirks, showing her rotten black teeth. Leaving an innocent man in your basement is no good for you. Vinificus will be wet enough to bloat cadavers like a fruit that's too ripe. If you want to flee the city, do it now, or the next pluvier, as it will be as dry as my old throat. But know that your conscience shall follow you, and that everyone pays the price for murder in the end. Wise words. So here you can see over the canal, and sort of the main entrance to Howtree Manor. So we are instead going to go underneath. That is a zombie that's I think is heading our way, or maybe underneath us. Let's see, we're going to drop down here. In this room you have two broaded arrows, but then you also have a stack of silver coins. You can go around there and head... Oh, yeah. She comes in. Let's be a little bit quicker, shall we? How does... Cannot make that little step there. Gotta love Garrett's shoes, or Yume's <laughs> shoes. Yume seems to have the same shoemaker that he picks up his attire from as Garrett does. Let's just wait then. She's too vigilant. drop down on the other side. We come out where she walks around. So now we can I think rope up here. At least I thought we could. And then we come out. close to where we emerged. <gasps> There's the gate. This is uh, Oil Maker Street. <gasps> Alright, let's go in here. Um, we're gonna 
head in here. Let's wait for this guy. So this is then the little plaza where we found some of the equipment earlier. Before we head in there, let me show you something. <sighs> Actually, mantle up here. <sighs> you can get up to the area where I blew up the boarded up window. So you can return if you if you have done that. Okay. So here is seemingly somewhere have already looted. However, cleverly hidden gold goblet on top of the window frame. 1419 total. but that seems very risky. Wow, I'm kind of trapped here between two. Here. There's a moss arrow, and if you go into this building, I don't think there's anything you pick up. Oh no, there is two water arrows. Go in here, you actually trigger another zombie to spawn. Stacks of copper coins. Here's also a dismembered body and nothing behind this. So this is very much Haunted Cathedral esque. Alright. Which I think is cool because it's not a very big section. The whole mission was like that in the original. Can't see him through the trees. Uh, enemies can see straight through trees as if they're not there. So, there we go. <laughs> he sees me from the distance through there. This is a sleeping zombie also, water arrow down there, like I said, and this area here has nothing. You can go around there, you can climb up here and come this way. And I'm not going to bother doing that. Let's go this way. <sighs> huh? <sighs> Here's a moss arrow, I think. Yep, right there. Oh, yeah. Let's go down here first. Yeah, they didn't hear that. 
Here's a sleeping zombie, you, and there's a silver goblet next to him. And this one you can take, because you are now elevated. So that's a good way to... <sighs> trick those. <sighs> or just... <sighs> not make them aware of your presence. Another abandoned area. Nothing behind this. Two goblets there. Total 1471. We can jump across here. This is a pickable footlocker. It has a smoke bomb in it. If you're looking to pick up everything. You could hear some spiders. So we are now... Uh, we've now been in this area south of the industrial tenements. And we've moved away or around towards the east. And we're now moving our way back northeast. Up to this section. Here are two spiders. But they're both looking away. So no worries. Here's a rope arrow. But more importantly, there is a very small ring, which I did find on my first playthrough. You always want to check little piles of bones like this for purses or coins and stuff like that. Rings in this campaign are most often only worth value at 20. <sighs> base, and that hits the loot objective of 15, total room. Nothing to pick up, but it's just... Shows a lot of wear and tear. Okay. Here is that sleeping zombie. Careful. Now we can see the manor. This is picturesque, isn't it? Slight slowdowns here, too, for me. So now we're at the very eastern end of the canal. We're actually on top of, of the balcony here. There's a couple of patrollers below and inside the grounds also. Drop down like that. And you can drop down like this. Furthermore, here. Here are two stacks of copper coins. Total 1601. Let's see. Okay. I don't think he comes down to this end. I'm not sure. good there. Let's see. I think maybe he goes inside the... No, he doesn't. Okay. Another one. <sighs> he 
Here's a silver candlestick worth 25. Total 1626. <sighs> Alright, as long as you get onto the chain here, you're safe. Alright, I'm gonna drop into the canal. Show you a couple of things. Um, two water arrows, I believe. Three, actually, in total. One at the other end as well. There are two moss arrows hanging here. And then, sticking out from this little wooden beam is a broadhead arrow. Sort of a random placement of that. There's nothing else in the canal, but you can <laughs> mantle up here and then get up via these wooden beams. So it's a little bit tricky and you are a little bit exposed, so I wouldn't suggest doing that. <laughs> Follow this guy, and we're gonna get into the manor next. <sighs> this this looks like a house of bad dreams. I better be careful. House of bad dreams, that's for sure. So this manor just looks awesome from the outside. Now there are a couple of patrollers inside the grounds, and then one of the zombies, I think maybe that's the one from the outside that comes in. Um, let's drop here. Real save. There. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you uh, all the way around it because there isn't really anything to pick up that I found. But there is a door in the back that can be picked. It takes you into the ground floor on the north side. I don't want to pick that lock, and there's another way in. There's also a cellar door here. Um, which is sort of in this location that can take you into the cellar then, but you can't access the cellar much now. So it's right where that guy is. So I am instead going to head in a different way that doesn't require any lockpicks. <laughs> First of all, there are five coins in the dried up fountain. There they are. There's a sleeping zombie here as well. There's another sleeping zombie over there in the gazebo. Because up on this balcony... You can actually rope arrow up fairly easily. <sighs> like that. Now this door is locked and pickable. And this will take you in... This is the balcony. This will take you into the eastern section on the second floor. But this door on this side is not pickable and it's unlocked. That's the only way I've found to get into the manor without necessarily picking a lock. So now we are here. Now, something is going to happen at a certain point that will trigger quite a few new enemies. So we want to get as much as we can done inside the manor before that happens. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So we are in the southern section at this point. Oh, that's right. You can't use this door. For some reason, that's not probable. There's one patroller upstairs. 
I think one one downstairs as well. For now, right? <sighs> and he sees us at least. On the railing. Most of the floors are tile as well, so you have to move slowly. <sighs> Is a fair bit of shade. See, this door is barricaded, that's why. I answered my own question there. So we want to get into this room, southwest room. You can access the attic from several places. We're not going to do that now. But in here is a tiara on the floor, fairly well hidden, sort of half embedded, 1756. And here's a door that looks weird. Strange. Something's weird with that door. Here, there's nothing to pick up, but it's a very cryptic room. I love the sounds. The atmosphere in this building is just fantastic. And here are floating brains, or hovering brains. I, I thought there would be something that you had to do in this room when I first encountered it with these braziers at least, but it doesn't seem like anything is there, hidden or not. So let's not go in there. I have to move slowly here to not get hurt. It's unnaturally cold for some reason, hmm. and it won't budge. So... Oh, I don't like that. I cannot do those kind of sounds. <sighs> There's a bottle of wine. We don't want to drop down now. We're going to use this room quite a bit. Because you can't go up and down without, you know, getting in contact <sighs> with any enemies. Oh, it's so annoying with these little ledges that you can't deal with. Let's see, so here is one of the portraits. Portraits of a dead person. This is Sir Paul Victor Harvey Howtry. Interesting. I was told these portraits were painted when these people were alive. Okay. So now we're headed into the east room on the second floor. This is um, at least the library on this level. So this door here is... Possible to open for now. Take those glasses, 1856. I don't want to say too much because the sounds are so immersive. Hmm? 
Oh, it's upstairs. There's a patroller on each floor. Mantling is still my least favorite thing in Thief. There. Okay. So now we're in the attic. It's totally okay. If we go into this room, that's directly above the room that couldn't be opened. So now we can go down. Let's remember to close this grate, shall we? So here there is... A hole in the roof. Let's see. Let's shoot this. Like that. This has been barricaded, obviously, because somebody has killed themselves. Okay. A couple of coin stacks. Sir William Herbert Howtry. Second out of seven portraits that we have to get. There's also two nicely hidden purple vases up here. Also a weird statue. Two thousand eight. Now there is obviously also a rope arrow here in case you fall down and can't get back up and are out of rope arrows. It's always a nice touch from the authors when they think of that. <sighs> So now we can hit the rest of the the rest of the attic. Huh? <sighs> what was it? Oh, through here. Through the grate. On that side, he could see me. Referring to them as, as male. balcony with a skeleton in a position like this uh, maybe somebody who died here but then there is a diamond uh, that is floating around let's see what happens when we take that diamond <laughs> these bones go flying all of them land on this balcony, so none of them are flying anywhere else. And this is worth 100. Nobody heard that. But we did trigger and spawn an apparition. <sighs> down very at the very bottom floor, ground floor down there. So... I would like your opinion. I don't think this is a bust for Supreme. It doesn't feel very clean, for sure. Um, the only thing that would be a bust would be the destruction of the bones. So is that property, is this property damage? I don't think so. Um, are bones someone's property? I wouldn't say so. And it's not like we're using excessive force. We're simply taking the... Um, 
the diamond, but that isn't always what determines if it's damage or not. It's more the result. But I would simply say that the bones are not property. And therefore, this is good. Nobody heard it. Triggering and spawning an enemy is not a bust. So, although it doesn't feel 100% clean, I don't think it busts Supreme. So I'm going to take it. Very difficult to get out of this area here. At least I haven't found a consistent way of doing it. Because you always bump into something. Awesome. We have two rope arrows, so we're good there. It's gonna make her real safe. Let's see. 2108, yes. Head into this room right here. Zombie does come in here. Here's a stack of silver coins, and there is a readable. Adept Kikem. Our experiments with taming that thing have taken their toll on our Tachana's flower supply. At this rate, we will have exhausted our stock come next week. I have no news from our agent at High Watch. I fear he may have been compromised. In the meantime, we will have to find another way to get them. I have it on good authority that a certain Dorcas Goodfellow, a wretched criminal hailing from Blackbrook, trades in magical items such as these. It repulses me having to deal with this kind of lowlife. But we are in dire need of these flowers. I've arranged a meeting with one of our lackeys in Hightown, and will have already departed by the time you read this letter, Acolyte Ancelos. Alrighty. Also, on top of... <sighs> the beam here is a silver plate. Twenty-five total, twenty-one forty-five. See, we're gonna leave now. Balcony. This isn't as hidden, but here's a gas arrow, which, of course, is not really that useful on, on undeads. So we don't really need to go out there. You can use the... I could have done that, but... Um, I would have had to hit that other. other room first. Uh, Instead, let me show you something cool. A little. An Easter egg or what it is. on angles is just frustrating more than anything else in Thief. If you go up here... Mantle up on this fence. 
and then head to the end. You can drop down here. You can take 666 Shocker Fire Arrows. And a note. Congratulations, you really are a taffer. Now, how are you going to come back down? I have not tried to come back down without, you know, taking damage. Is it possible? Don't think you can mantle back up here. So, I don't really know. You can probably land in a mantle somewhere. <laughs> but whether that is possible, I'm not sure, so let me know. We don't need to go there, regardless. But that's a lot of fire arrows if you need it. Now, we are going to need to pick the lock on this door. One of the few lockpicks we have to do. And here is sort of a neutral apparition inside of a cage. Sir Stephen Howard Atkinson Howtry. That's three out of seven. There's nothing else, I think, in here. So here is a sleeping zombie. good shade in, uh, in, in this area, so let's just wait. statue right here. And then to get into that room without having to deal with that. Sleeping zombie, you can you can jump in there. read this. Lord Whitsaman is urging the lady to evacuate, despite our moderate distance from this accursed cathedral. Most of the house guards have already fled, the pathetic cowards. Some even took trinkets and jewelry like rogues. Captain Caffey is still with the lady and has barricaded the front gates. I can hear the raging fires and the terrifying battles going on against the undead from my window, several blocks away in De Perrin Street. I heard they are trying to build a big wall to contain the undead pouring from the cathedral. Oh, what terrible dire times. I barely have time to write this. Lord Whitsimmon has arrived with his guard and a contingent of Hamrites to help us flee the old quarter. I don't know if this letter will ever reach you, but I hope I'll be able to see you again. Your love, Biddy. So I like the fact that the readables that are sort of from before the incident uh, is very old and worn, while the other readables are probably then from people that are here now, or maybe. Plate. Oh, that was very loud, but nobody hears that. Okay, so in 
here in the western section, so we've now... There is no map of the attic, so we've moved west at this point. We find a rug. So here you can drop down to the bottom floor. Or two stacks of copper coins. So now we're above that weird room with the brains. Let me see here. down to the ground floor. Let's make another real save. And we can use this room. Here, kitchen, there's nothing to pick up there, but here is yet another door that can't be opened. might have seen me there with a side view. Oh, um, I didn't think that he actually faced us. I thought he only faced the other direction, so let's see. see us now. Gotta be a little bit careful here. Stay quiet because I want to hear for alerts from the zombie too. We've got this annoying wisp here as well, keeping us lit, or whatever it is. 2290. this room. You can't get here from the attic, so here's a red vase. It's also a very well hidden ring. One of the last pieces I've found. And that causes this uh, Burick's mouth to drop as you take the ring. Let's 
Let's see, there's not. No. Oh, that he heard. You could hear that. There should be a zombie down here as well. I hope he hasn't gotten stuck. Here's a blue vase. Here is Sir Maximilian Johannes Gustav Houtry. Four out of seven. This is the door that you can take from the outside that is pickable. There, okay, so he... Sleeping zombie in that room. Let's just wait for him to move. There. So it's difficult to move through that part of the manor. Should go in there. So we've now we're now moving towards the southwest on the first floor of this room here. These rooms we haven't gone into. Dead spider. Here we have Sir Valentino Hector Houtry, five out of seven. And we can drop here. But here we have yet another door that's of that kind. And here is the access outside, which you can pick open. I showed you that from the front. Let's see. A red goblet. Oh, yeah. I think this sort of entity or wisp thing is trying to show you where to go. <sighs> I think so. So the northwest room on the ground floor is the only room that we have not gone to that we can go to now. And there's a very specific reason for that. Oh no, am I going to be stuck here now? So this is a music room. So Alexander Theodore Guillaume Houtry. Uh, Six out of seven, so we're only missing one. Two silver goblets here, 2572. There's one more piece of loot as well. A 
flute. 26, 22. Real save time. Here is a chest. That is pickable. And uh, we don't know why, but we have to pick this lock. Without me, that precious harp is beyond your reach. Come to me. What's that voice? Okay. So, what we have triggered now is... The double doors to the west room on the second floor are now open. There's nothing that indicates that, but we have triggered something that will make that room accessible. The best way to go there, I think. with the rope here. So here we have some strange ritualistic setup with an odd statue-looking thing in the middle here. We're first going to take these two blue vases and the last portrait. Sir Stanislas Alphonse Houtry. Right. That's the last one. None shall pass into the heart. So that continues the checking off of objectives. We only but have the uh, heart left. Guidance, I will take okay, you let's see. So we have a couple of more things to pick up here as well. <sighs> we have this. And then, yeah, we can't. Shoot a rope. So this is actually a part of the attic that we couldn't get to. There is a silver candlestick here. 2797. Take that and I'm gonna draw 
drop onto this. <sighs> can mantle onto that, not take damage. You need only yeah, allow me to guide you. Don't and think anyone heard that. Will be yours. So now, let's make another real save. We're gonna frob this thing. Something major is gonna happen. <laughs> you fool. Did you think I was a mere idol? Heed and watch, pathetic creature. Your flesh shall putrefy and your life shall wither away to serve their schemes. You can already feel it, can't you? How does it feel being branded a sacrifice? Alright, so that's what the brand means. My brand comes at a great price for a mortal such as you. But it does have a few benefits. Use my gift well for the rest of your pitifully short life. So we've been branded a sacrifice for this entity, whatever it is. And it comes with some benefits. So what's, what's that thing on the door? So, what's happening to you? Strange sigils on the wall and the harp is nowhere to be found. That thing said you were branded for somebody. Find out what you can. Alrighty, well that might be... A good plan. Make another real save, and let's see what's going on here. So now there are suddenly other enemies here. An axe apparition. Zombie's still there, but there are other enemies, too, that we have to sort of dodge. We don't really have to go around the manor much at this point. We just need to get to the northeast room to visit the second floor room that wasn't accessible earlier, and then head down to the basement. It's really all we need to do at this point. I made sound there and they heard me. I can't tell. Apparitions are ghost-wise the worst ones to detect. What? That tap there. I don't want to make that. very good that we've taken all the portraits, for example. We don't have to mess with that objective now. So now these doors have a glyph on them, which means we can open them. And the last two doors are both leading to the basement. Okay. So in here there's a piece of loot, 2847. That's all the loot in the manor, actually. Um, but there's also a couple of readables. The Sworn Book of Eluzdar, the Six-Eyed Channeler. The place of power shall be away from the world of man. 
far into the deepest deserts, buried in the blind lands, high in the tallest mountains, below the profound waters, and it shall be clean and free from the thoughts of worldly passions. Thus the place, once chosen, shall be purified, and so by burning offerings of corpse wax, lime water, and cloves. And pure mirror shall be brought, shall be brought and purified sand, and the sand shall be burned in the brazier of calling, and the mirror shall be scattered around the brazier as an offering to the four winds. And thou shalt be naked in thy right, as the priests of yore were naked in the, their rituals. And thou shalt draw fresh blood from a sacrificial child with a blessed dagger, embroidered in a most precious silk. And a circle shall be drawn sunwise on the ground with the fresh blood. In the midst whereof thou shalt stand while reciting the conjurations of Elidzar, taking care not to venture forth from the boundaries of the mandala, lest thou be consumed by the unseen from Erebus, the lower heavens in the, the darkest plains. And the vessel full of the soul of man, be it honest in life or evil, shall be placed in the center of the circle, and the incantations to the Lord of Erebus shall be pronounced, and the portal to the dark sanctuary shall be opened. O channeler or magus, ready thy mind, be open and sober in patience for the revelations, obedient as a child to the father, as fathers to the priest, as priests to the gods, and gods to the Demiurgus, the Almighty. So I think the Dark Sanctuary is what we are going to visit in the last mission. I believe that's what it is. Um, not a hundred percent. All right, one more. Philosophers of yore described the secrets of the soul in a way that was far more complex and sophisticated than the dribble contemporary erudites and the clergy like to regurgitate. Well, they are not wasting their time on feudal debates on whether asking this question is a sacrilegious act or not. <clears throat> While the Order of the Hammer speaks of Numa and of Sarks, and the pagans like to talk about primitive mythology with an often puerile credulity, the truth is this. Every mortal being, sentient and intelligent, is made of four sacred elements. Firstly, there is the boyardrel, the chest, the shell, the body, the cadaver. <clears throat> then the yorl, the kagido, the feelings, the conscience, the realization of existence, life's azoth. It is a different subject for non-initiates, but it is also the true name. Afterward, there is the kubithla, the opposite of the yorl the shadows, the natural result stating that everything possessing a physical existence also has a shadow, the proof of mortality. This is a delicate subject to explain. Finally, there is the Ka, that which cannot be explained, for it has too many meanings. In truth, one could call it destiny. All right. So this is then the symbol <coughs> that we saw on the floor. In the West Room, it troubles me that this measly fragment is the only known remains of the instructions that pious rat Abuptiar was ranting against. The original rituals must have been wondrous beyond comprehension. A more complete copy is needed before I can be sure of my translation. Control of the Sentience by Ur Magus Abuptiar. Critical excerpts of the lost original work of Abuptiar's tablets presented this in, the, in this original ur Magus, Magic script. The realm of souls is like a door, visualized to enter the sentient's mind. One should have either the keys to open it, or the cunning to weaken the barrier and let it move aside for him. Establish control after entry, not before. Wise is the one who studies the sentient to balance inhibitors, and keep the sentient weak with what is unknown to it until the ritual of taming is complete. If done correctly, I become a conduit for its power. This is very cryptic. It might make more sense in the last mission, though, which I have not played. There is actually one of the apparitions that come into this room now, I think. We are going to head down to the basement. that comes into the kitchen. Um, let me see, I might... Did I forget to close the door up there? I kind of think that I did.
All right. Let's make another real set down here. So there's a zombie with a bag on its head, but apparently he can see us still. He walks very fast. So in the basement, there's not much to do. There's rooms to see. Some experiments that have been conducted here for sure. Let's read this. Master Gromoval, we're rather satisfied with our little trade so far, but I think I have to remind you again that we are very picky concerning your merchandise. Do I need to remind you of the prices? 2,000 gold for a fresh corpse, 1,000 for a fresh but damaged corpse, 500 gold for a decomposed corpse. Please. Don't try to bargain again and ask for another raise. I do believe we already give you more than enough. Another thing, there's no need to try your chance again with your puny embalming techniques. We are far from being dimwits and even further from being patient. You know who. Okay. So, Master Gromoval, I didn't say anything else in terms of names. What? How did... That is crazy. I didn't know that he... He actually alerts to the door there. Well, we just made a real save. Let's not. Doesn't alert to that door. He does hear that door too. Okay. I didn't actually know that. Interesting. Doesn't hear the opening of the door. Sometimes the opening is quieter than the closing. Oh, he heard the, the stepping noise. He didn't hear that. What? That is insane. I did not notice that in my play playtesting at all. room that we need to go in, but just another lab with a lot of stuff in it. Let's wait for him to come back in. I don't think we get caught here. There was a room or a door on the south there, but that leads into the main lab that goes on this side of the wall. I'll show you that from the inside later. Here we have a room with a couple of readables in it. But there's also an enemy here. So he doesn't give any first alerts, and this zombie is actually... can alert to us. this. While I'm away studying the aura emanating from the cathedral, pursue the recent progress made in keeping the undead both servile and violent. Fitting flesh for revenant army. Paramount above even this, however, is to keep ever vigilant of the statuette. No matter our capacity to use it, we are not in control of it. Expect more relays to be lured here unwittingly. Stay behind sealed doors until I return. 
prying into the ghostly melody around the music room is to cease. It is a trick of the statuette. Were there some magical harp on the grounds? We would have discovered it long ago. Azaran. Wow. Azaran. Uh, you might remember Azaran the Cruel is from a readable in the Necromancer's Tower in Life of the Party, and also in the Thief 2 demo. Unwelcome guest. So that might... Necromancers. I confirmed the fact that these are necromancers, right? So now, steal the harp inlaid with amethyst have been cancelled. This is not a failed objective, this is a cancelled one. And we have now found the information we need to. So then really all we need to do is leave. We don't need to do anything more. We've gotten all the loot from the manor. Now there's one more readable in here that I want to... Acolyte Aura. I'm very concerned about something, but can't bring myself to tell either Adept Kikim or Azaran himself. We are mortals and thus require sustenance, but our food and water supplies rot at an alarming rate. Water isn't really a problem since the canal provides all we need, but there are no living creatures anymore around the manor. Our hunting expeditions take us deeper and deeper into the sealed sections, and our fresh food expense are getting far too high. It is worth noting that our experiments cause nearby flora to wither and die, among others, and I fear the canal may propagate this blight, as I've noticed dying bushes beyond the manor grounds, while the wild and unruly vegetation elsewhere is untouched. It is also important to mention that every time we leave the manor to buy supplies, we risk being discovered. Something must be done about this. You know who. Okay. Seems like this guy is, like, suturing something. I think that's what those movements are supposed to indicate. Alrighty, we can make another real save because... <coughs> we actually don't need to do anything more here, but I'm going to show you a few things. Here is a... Um, sleeping zombie. Let's run past him. You can get past him in various ways. You can go in through this door, which is the one from the from the western section on the ground floor. These two doors lead to the same area. There's a conversation we're going to listen to. And in this room, another lab. There's a fire arrow here. If the 666 isn't enough for you. Let us overhear that conversation. Where is the master and the rest of our acolytes? They went deeper beyond the barricades to study the strange aura coming from the cathedral. The master finds this aura rather peculiar. What are we supposed to do in the meantime? Kakim was very specific. We are to keep an eye on the experiments and to make sure the artifact is kept secure until Lalakaba returns with the next batch of Tatiana's flowers. We cannot tame it properly unless it is drunk. That greedy merchant's prices are far too steep for such a product. True. But in the meantime, the use of Tatiana's flowers is the only way, and no one knows of any other item with such properties. Besides, we cannot risk going to the Essie Range ourselves to gather them. The Hand has spies there. Enough talk. Let's get back to work. I can say the smell is not so bad after a few days. It's been. Let's knock these out so that we can see what's what. This letter here is the same one that we read from Azaran. And then there's some other things in here. There's a book here that we haven't read yet. Research is going particularly well. Blood analysis. Subject 201, a thief we caught, seems to perfectly react to the energy surge and is blood linked to fire. The vital cycle is broken. The soul has obviously left the vessel, but the heart beats still and the lungs breathe still. Subject does not feel pain. The overdose of fire increases his aggression. Another dose in his flesh would explode, just like a fire crystal. Drowning seems to work, probably through a pacifying of the fire that is keeping him alive, and that leaves a body with a departed soul on this earth. Why holy water? What reaction? More tests need to be done. Alright, that's it. And this door here takes you back out to the hallway with this patrol. So 
all we need to do here is leave. So we can't, we have to wait for him now. What? He hears that. <laughs> Let me know if any of you makers are in in the chat if if this guy here is cranked up to max for hearing. Seems to see pretty well too. Although he shouldn't, maybe. I knew it, he would hear that step. That I couldn't tell where I got spotted. This is pickable, but I don't want to pick it, so. <sighs> I can't tell if it's. Is it a zombie that alerts to... ...to one of the apparitions? <sighs> oh. There you see that one with tons of stakes through him. So we can actually leave through the balcony. Same way that we did. <sighs> that is this zombie here seeing me, I think. Maybe are is there are there alert level cranked up or something now? Oh, no, no, he wasn't alerted. He just did a, a hunt maneuver as a part of his script. Gotcha. have to wait these guys out a little bit.
So we are needing to head back now, but we do have a few things to do. There's a couple places that we haven't looted. That we gotta make sure that we get done with. just be able to go out the main entrance. But I remember, you can't, you bump into the tree as you jump from it, so you have to mantle up it. <gasps> Who saw us there? It's a faint alert, but it was there. Trying to jump off onto that pipe. This isn't easy. Now we want to go back here. <sighs> this direction. Drop into. 
to the canal. Because now we want to go through here. Here are three moss arrows. One gate here. Okay, let's make another real save. Alright, so remember how I said that uh, I could get to the alchemist from um, a pickable door that was by Alderman's Court underneath the staircase here. So we're actually going to come from the back so that we don't have to pick the lock on that door or to get into the alchemist. Here is a sleeping zombie. Sort of a, a coal room. There's nothing else in here. So there's no point to even go. Instead, we're going to go this direction. There's nobody down here right now to, to detect us. Here's an access point into the sewers, and that we're going to take in a moment. Here is a corpse, not a zombie. Under here, in the water, I think are um, two water arrows. So notice that corpse. In this room you have a spirit potion. You have a mine over here and I think there's another mine too. Right there. But then you have a goblet, a green vase, and two stacks of copper coins. 29, 22. Now when we go back here, that corpse is gone. And let me show you. Oh yeah, this is a room as well. That doesn't have anything in it, just some noises. If you then go all the way back here, re-enter this area. That corpse has now become a zombie, you can see. But it doesn't, it's not always uh, something you find because it triggers when you come back in after having gotten the loot, so there's no reason sometimes for going into this area. Okay, instead we're going to head into the sewers, and I'll show you this. There are three exits from the sewers. This is one. Here's just a pit with some corpses. We don't need to go there. Move over this direction. If we go this way. Show you all the entry and exit points. area that we took when we moved underground. Remember the difficult mantles I had up here and now it's not a problem at all for me to mantle. <laughs> so that's one exit from the sewers. Two and then the last one, actually the last two. Or here. Here's a moss arrow. This is just a, seems like an old pipe that is broken that is now filled in with dirt and muck and sewage. There's a cray man. Remember the readable talked about a cray thing that he had seen. This is that cray thing. We're going to follow this guy. Here's a, a room. there. Let's follow him and the mantling in this mission is sometimes very difficult. Or maybe just my incompetence, I'm not sure.
<sighs> he does a little pivot there that I don't like. It's like his con his control is messed up. Like there. <sighs> All right, if we go over here. We should be safe. Here is a. Um, A row barrow. Oh, he does see that. Oh, well, we can hide here. Here's a water arrow. Here's a noisemaker arrow. Right there. If we take this water arrow, this guy wakes up. And that scared the crap out of me the first time it happened. So whoever came up with that, good job. Because it worked. Oh. I don't even know how to get past this guy. that hopefully that works so rope arrow ma uh, water arrow and a noisemaker arrow back there okay good then we can continue water arrows here. Here is a stack of silver coins. 29. 34. Okay, there's, um, there's a guard upstairs. Now here you also see what looks like the corpse of the trickster. Uh, not sure what reference that's supposed to be or what that's supposed to mean, but just mysterious and cryptic. Now, deep down in this pit here, there is something, actually. Um, you can try to find it on your own. It's a little bit difficult. You have to drop down and land in the mantle. There is something down there, as you can see. And we're going to head up this... this ladder here right now. And that takes us up to the prison. <sighs> so this is... Um, the route we're going to take, if you go here, this is a back entry to the alchemist, but this door is pickable, and I don't want to pick that door. So there is another way to get to the alchemist also. I'll show you that. There's the jail, the prison control room. actually go on this side. I think that'll be better. Here's a guy. He 
here's a woman. The crazy face. Room. This is the pickable door then from the streets. And inside the jail itself, two stacks of coins. 2967. And there's a prison log. Cell 1, S. Harsey, for rabble rousing and suspicious behavior. A judge to the pillory. Toothless Tamart, for drunkenness pissing on the alderman's property. Cell 2, unusable. Cell 3, Shelley B. That's the woman we saw. For causing a scene, a judge to the cucking stool. Note, Jaquin has been transferred to Guile... Guile at Speak? I think the S should be Guile's at Peak there. Upon Abbot Eckbert's request. I think maybe that's a typo, I'm not sure. Someone behind me? Okay, let's see. The place we have left to go is the Alchemist, actually. So how are we going to get there, then? Well... Alright, we definitely have to wait for that guy to... It's not Crouch. Gotta listen for it. Cliff is not there if you haven't been branded first. So there's no way to access this area until after you have been to Haltree Manor. And it closes on its own. This is a very interesting area. It's in the basement, actually, underneath the um, alchemist. Rotten meat and stuff like that. Nothing to pick up here, but we can go up. We can open this gate and get to the al alchemist this way. Now, if we go back down, it's actually an armless zombie that have spawned and are now patrolling this hallway. Some ewing throw up at us. There, so that saves us from having to um, pick the lock on any doors. Now, of course, we have to close this again. But that we can do fairly easily. Come up to the alchemist right here. This door is not pickable, so that's good. Okay. 
So at the Alchemist, there is a valuable book here. This is a pressure plate, and this is a pressure plate. These are traps. Holy water vial and a moss arrow. Okay. Three coin stacks. In the back, there is a fire arrow. And there's a plaque. The builder doth not want good words and good desires, but efficient workmanship, fervor, and courage. St. Basilius, the sequicentenarian blacksmith. Sequicentenarian. Sesquicentenarian. Does that mean someone who's been alive in two different centuries? I can't remember, but I think so. Maybe that's what it means. Alright, and then the last piece of loot that we are going to take is a gold vase 3126. Something else that's in here is up there is a strength potion. Have we seen a strength potion yet? I don't think we have. But a strength potion, and this is the pickable door then down to the prison. Uh, a strength potion is one that you can use in order to move at normal speed when you're carrying corpses. Um, I'm not sure if it also diminishes the damage you take from attacks. Not 100% sure on that. <clears throat> but that would be cool if it did. Okay, we are done, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me for this one. We can unlock the door like this, and then to relock it, we can do that and simply throb it again. Let's see, make sure that we don't have anything we don't need here. We started with all of this. Good. Close that, and then we can end the mission, can't we? Awesome. Another fantastic mission. Um, I'll probably give this an 8.5 out of 10. Between 8.5 and, and 9. I'm, I'm a little bit torn there. 8.75. Should we do that? Um, and this was a successful Supreme Ghost run of the brand. Unless you guys noticed something that I didn't. Uh, stats, total time, 1 hour, 31 minutes, 29 seconds. We took 3126 loot out of 3128. We skipped the two coins that require a growl from the sleeping zombie in the bed um, above the canal in the sealed section. We picked four out of four pockets. We picked two locks. Those were both necessary uh, for objectives or loot. No backstabs, knockouts, no damage dealt taken or healing taken, nothing and nobody killed. Campaign total, 7 hours, 38 minutes, 39 seconds. And we've taken 12,479 loot. We haven't dealt or taken any damage. Okay. Um, really like this mission. I like that it's sort of separated into three very distinct areas. The safe area, the sealed quarters, and then the manor itself. Um, I love the atmosphere inside the manor. Uh, it seemed a little bit empty at first. But once I noticed the details and you had the, the twist with the statue, that really made it more tense. And I like the fact that the story now is driven, should be at least towards us finding out what on earth is going on. Um, I also like uh, the, the way that the mission leads you towards the seal section but still gives you quite a few options of how to get in there. Uh, it's pretty obvious you have to get over the, um, the wall, but there are four or five different ways to end up there, both above and below ground. I really like that. So, um, I maybe wish there was a little bit more backstory on the Howtree family. Uh, there were a few readables, but not too much. Um, and the incident at the cathedral uh, becomes such an interesting part of what I wish would be explored. Of course, that's in the past. But let me know if there's any fan missions that delve into that cathedral incident or the incident. I'm not sure if it originally, by canon, 
originated at the cathedral or what it, what it did. But yeah, so uh, the next mission uh, will be back to Patriot. Actually, we're going to do mission eight detective. And let me know in chat or in the comments if you want me to do another premiere release for the Patriot or if you're not really that interested in watching that live and participating in chat for that mission. I know it's not as sought after, of course, as, as uh, the Black Parade is. So yeah, I'll try to give you guys a few days notice for when the premieres will be released. I, I can't give you too much because I have to see when I'm able to schedule it. And if I am going to participate in the chats, which of course is my goal, I need to find a free couple hours to do that as well. So yeah, with that, we'll end the brand, and uh, I'll see you guys back next time. Uh, have a good day or night, whatever it is when you watch this, and uh, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.